Okay, we're back with uh, two more comics to review. What are we looking at today? We are looking at Dead Man, well, in this video, and Catwoman. Yes, and I think that we've looked at a whole bunch of other things today, and yep. there's a whole bunch more to come. Well, there's four more to come. So, I say we start with Catwoman. Catwoman. Who is Catwoman? Catwoman is a film from 2004 starring Halle Berry as Patience Phillips, a aspiring advertising artist working for a cosmetics corporation who is fired when she discovers the horrible secret of the new miracle product Buleen, which is supposed to make you pretty but actually makes you ugly and kills you. Except this isn't that Catwoman. Good. This is Selena Kyle, who is Catwoman. Selena. She's a Cat. Oh, what do they call them? Cat. Not cat nappers. Cat thief. Cat burglar. Cat burglar. Yes, that's it. She's a cat burglar. She burgles uh, and then showers herself with diamonds. Yes, in the past she has been a villain and enemy of Batman. Now she's more of an anti hero, although in this comic it seems, if we could show the cover one more time, that she is more just kind of stupid since she likes to lay on buildings and pour diamonds over the Kind of just a hedonist. Yeah, he likes throwing away diamonds. What I do like about this cover, and that is that that isn't in the actual comic, is I like how the background is like this pink neon kind of pop arty kind of Hong thing. Kong Tokyo kind of. I do I do like that, and it's a shame that the comic isn't actually that type of style. Again, a case of why do you want to get someone doing the cover or do a style of cover that is so drastically different from. Yeah. But I do like that. So I do as well. Uh, you want to do a story? I'll do a story. We we'll talk about story, but I think first that if we want to really summarize what the story is, I think if we just show the first page, it encapsulates everything very well. It's Catwoman's breasts, and, and then another panel of her breasts, and then cats, and then cats, and some breasts. Yeah. Anyway, the story is... But the story, is, it does actually get a bit deeper than that. Slightly, say. Yeah. Uh, then it goes back in the other direction. But mm -hmm. um, some thugs are trying to blow up Catwoman's apartment. Because so she stole something, and they want it back. So they blow up her apartment. I don't know if they get it back or not. Um, then she needs a new apartment, so she gets one, she needs a job, she investigates some Russians trying to find out some information, and then we get kind of close to the end. I really, there is some stuff that I'm not going to give away because it might be a bit spoiler related, but I am going to actually, I hope you don't mind, mention what happens in the last few pages since I don't think it's anticlimactic. Mm -hmm. I'm just, can I just say real quick? I she think has that, sex with Batman. Yeah, she fucks Batman for like four or five pages. Yeah. I think that it almost takes us entirely out of the plot of the story just to have a scene of Catwoman fucking Batman. Yep. And that is our... I think we've gotten really good at summer... Either we've gotten really good at summarizing the plots of these things, or... Here they are. Simpler. It's not very spoilery. Yeah, it's more... And this goes on yep. for a while. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Your impressions of the story. You know, I actually liked it. I mean, <laughs> like, I thought, I, I coming into Catwoman, <laughs> I thought this would be terrible, just kind of, um, you know, cheesecakey, fan service -y garbage, and, and it is mostly that, but Catwoman does have a lot of character. She is very well de developed, and, uh, uh, I mean, me to take yeah, I'm just gonna make a bunch of puns. As long as they're by accident. <laughs> Some of them. I can't actually say what Noah was thinking, but as far as Catwoman's character, she talks a lot through caption boxes, but they come through. She has a personality. I'm not going to say she's spunky. It's more than that. She's actually kind of witty. I think overall... She's funny. Yeah, she's funny. Overall, the idea of Catwoman is that she kind of is a hedonist. I think that goes through to the character. Mm -hmm that she's not going to have any boundaries or restrictions placed on her. And she's, she's only doing to, it for fun. She's, she's going to do what yeah. she wants and she's going to enjoy it. And I think that really comes through in her caption, her dialogue. I'll talk about that in a bit, but do you want to continue? Uh, yeah, I'm going to try and avoid making any sex puns. Um, but yeah, she she's a good character. And that's what carries most of the story. Um, and, I mean, and the story, really, it's not much of a story. It doesn't really go anywhere. I mean, other than her, her house exploding. Um, not much of note happens. Um, 
we were introduced to one of Catwoman's friends who isn't Batman, um, and how we, we get a bit of their relationship and their, their chemistry together. And overall, it is very character-driven, and they're not bad characters, I don't think. And I think that they're surprisingly want... interesting, deep characters. And I think maybe not deep, but they're they're interesting at the very least. They're fun, fun characters. For an example of sort of Catwoman's internal monologue, when she's running away from the folks who are going through her house, I know they're going to rip the place apart to find whatever the hell I took, or they think I took, but I probably did take it. Mm -hmm. They won't find anything except bras, books, wine, and cat food. I'll circle back in a day or two when the heat is off and they collect the rest of my... And then her house. Boom! Yeah. She, or I could stand here and watch it all burn. And she has this really disturbed she has this look sort of, on her face. And she's covered in cats. Um, yeah. She's a spinster. Spinster? A spinster is... A, well, it's an married woman yeah. who collects cats. I don't think that's part of the original definition of spinster, but... Um, it's part of the new definition. The new spinsters. That should be a comic book. The new <laughs> spinsters. Golden Girls. Uh, we'll figure it out, but let's write it. All right, the new spinsters. Anyway, things that I found the most sort of impactful, but also that I objected to the most, I think that Catwoman, in addition to having this sort of, uh, I'm going to uh, not follow the rules set out for me and I'll take what I want. I think it's more just like, yeah, I don't know what I want. I'm just going to do shit. Let's mm -hmm. have fun, etc. I think that's a bit too shallow an approach that for any sort of a comic, I mean, especially if we're looking at Catwoman, it's not really implied, well, I mean, it is implied in times, but it's not really explored why it is that she wants particular things, what more human emotions there are mm -hmm. going on under, or even just human motivations. Not that I'm saying we're never going to get into this, but I think that every time we come close to reaching that um, that sort of substance, we end, up, we end up getting distracted by the sexy thing. Yep. Or the writer gets distracted by the sexy thing, especially especially at the end, where we get, um... She's kind of squatting in this yeah. penthouse. She's squatting in a penthouse. And, and then Batman comes. But what we... Yeah. And then Batman comes. But we get this line, um... And then ba Batman. But, uh, she says, but I, she says, but I don't have a home. At best, I have people. Some go away, some stay, some stay close, some die. And then there's some, and we cut to Batman, who always just show up. And it's like her relationship to people. I mean, that's interesting. And then... And then sexy time. Just fuck Batman. Yeah. And that is kind of... My other big problem with this... Um, the comic itself gets distracted by the sexy. Yeah. It's, it's not, going somewhere, and it's going somewhere that could be a good place to go. But then it's just, hey, boobs. Yes, or skin-tight outfits. Yeah. And, I mean, and I really like Catwoman the character, mm -hmm. so I think we're kind of being done a disservice by not getting yeah. enough of her. But also, the one thing that really bothers me, the reboot, we know, has changed a few things. So far, we haven't encountered too many egregious changes to the continuity, but probably the most significant one for me so far, or that's bothered me the most so far, probably the second one after Amanda Waller losing 90 pounds. But, um... Catwoman apparently no longer knows Batman's secret identity. Um, I really like the Hush storyline from a while back. I think that although there's a lot of other stuff going on, I think I actually point to this to other people. If you want an episode of a good, an example of a good sort of romantic episode in uh, the lives of superheroes, just how that story deals with the relationship between Batman and Catwoman, that it's about Batman giving his identity to Catwoman in a way to essentially make himself vulnerable that symbolizes the commitment that they both have to each other. Here she says, I have no idea who he is, and I don't care. I like it that way, because we can just have sex in someone else's penthouse, which I think is just not only not a particularly good story here, but it's actually setting up much fewer possibilities for the entire relationship between Batman and Catwoman from here on, so I think that's kind of damaging. Mm -hmm. Um, but things that... Oh, and also, I think that there's the one panel, which we showed before, of Catwoman kissing Batman, which bears a very, very strong resemblance to one of the last pages of Hush. Although, this, I think, we have more ass from Catwoman and a much more surprised expression from Batman. Yep. But do we want to talk about some of the things that we did like just regarding... Um, the Art. violence 
the violence. It is there is um there is violence, but um, it's mostly directed at at men. No. Russian men. No. Oh yeah, I forget. She stuffs a bunch of cats into something that can't fit as many cats as she's, she wants to stuff into it. She's just shoving a bunch of cats in a carrying case. Yeah, and but I, it's missing the sound effect. Mm -hmm. Just, it's hilarious. And then, and she's jumping from rooftop to rooftop, swinging the carry carrying case. And you see cats, cats are flying out. Out. <laughs> just out of the case. And violence to cats is always fun. And I just hate cats. I'm not a cat person. I don't dislike cats, but I still no, think I, that. I just hate cats. Look at them there. They're, they're so afraid. It's hilarious. So yeah, I have. Uh, I will say that there's the expression. There's more than one way to skin a cat. This means that at one time, not only were people regularly skinning cats, but they needed to have multiple methods of doing so for entertaining. Yeah. yeah. So do we want to kind of guess talk about the art to the artwork? It's sexy art. It's very shiny. It's very shiny, kind of strip clubby art. Yeah, you got a lot of ass. A lot of breasts. ass. A lot of breasts. Yeah, a lot. A lot of Catwoman, like this. This one. She looks like Mary Jane in this one. In Spider Man. I didn't know Mary Jane was that uh, skankily dressed. And I'm not saying skankily dressed in a bad way, although, in all fairness, as part of the plot, that is a pretty skanky yeah. dress. But, um, so yeah, I think that overall, in terms of the art, we've shown quite a few pages here. It's not just that, it's kind of not the best kind of sexy art because it's. It kind of warps reality around unrealistic body poses, like where she becomes segments her legs to become a spider. Mm -hmm. It's um, so yeah, we've got a lot of that, just a lot of this real sort of a latexy feel to it. Real shiny round body parts is mostly what we focus on. Sometimes on some people. I mean, sometimes I say people as opposed to Catwoman, but sometimes on some other people mm -hmm. who aren't Catwoman or Batman, we tend to get a bit more of a sort of pale, grotesque looking thing. I think if we look at the... Okay, let's find a page without any breasts on it. <laughs> I don't think that's possible. Like, over, like I think these fellows here? Yeah. I mean, I think that's a good example. Some other people, they have kind of an undead thing going on. And it's a different style. It's much paler, but it still has a lot of the same textural qualities to yeah. it. Um, but yeah, it's... There is a lot of just even when she leaves when she flees her apartment, she is not entirely wearing her cat suit and she's like for some reason these women in comic books, especially when they're not fully dressed, seem to wear bras that are too small for them. Yeah. I don't understand this. Maybe Victoria's Secret just always out of large sizes? I don't know. Oh, because women have such large breasts in these universes. Yeah. Of course. So that's mostly what we've got with Catwoman. On a letter scale, where would you put it? I, um, I would like to rate it higher than I'm going to rate it, mm -hmm. and the only reason I'm rating it lower is because the comic does get distracted by the sexy. I think there's a lot of potential here, I think the character of Catwoman is a good character, but the, 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 the comics kind of focus on this, like, just sexiness instead of actual character development. Um, does bring it down, so I'm only going to give it a C, where I would like to, if there was less focus on just random sex, give it a B. I'm going to go lower and give it a D plus, actually, because, um, grow up. I'm going to give it a D plus, because the way I see it, and I know what I'm trying to say, I know I've said with other things that we're not comparing these characters to who they are in other media, but we are kind of looking at a character who, just in terms of creating a character even from the ground up, that there's potential, but they seem to be, I don't know, creating a character who's interesting and funny, but at the same time really shallow. I think mm -hmm. similar to the way that the story goes. I don't think the story is really going anywhere. I think we have a lot of just nudity. I don't like the ending. No, and, the ending is just and, not. And also, even if we don't look at it as a change, I think that if we're establishing the relationship between Catwoman and Batman as this from here on out, then I think it's a bad establishment because I don't really think it's given as much potential for future stories. So, yeah, I'm giving it a D+. Plus. Um, and the plus is... It's a plus because I do... I think it's funny at points. Um, yeah, so... Ready? Moving on, I suppose, to DC Universe Presents... Dead, Dead Man. Man. Now... Before we get into this, do we want to discuss like a one of our main issues with it? 
Actually, I don't think. I think we could discuss that after. Oh, okay. um, I think first we should talk about what DC Universe Presents is. So, DC Universe Presents is an anthology series where this week it's Dead Man, and I don't know if they're going to continue the Dead Man story until it finishes. They are going to continue it into several arcs. Okay, um, but what it is, it's it's highlighting. Not several arcs, one arc, several. It's highlighting uh, smaller characters in the DC Universe who don't have their own comics, but DC would still like to make stories of. So. So a few weeks will be Dead Man, then DC Universe Presents will have, I don't know, let's, I'm going to say The Question or something. And there'll be these Wish small... Which indeed it is. <laughs> but there's small vignettes or smaller arcs dedicated to one character, but the comic isn't about that one character all the time. So anthology series, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's odd because when I hear, um, when I hear anthology, I think more like The Twilight Zone, mm -hmm. like an anthology excuse me, TV series, where you'll have a different story in each issue. If this, I think that if this were a self-contained story, it might have worked better, but um, what we've got is the beginning of an arc featuring Dead Man, but it's not for a long-running series, it's just for a single arc. Mm -hmm. um, and Dead Man, I love introducing Dead Man. He's a superhero, I'll give you three guesses as to what Dead Man's power is. And I'll give you a hint, it's not being alive. Is he in a coma? Yes. No, he's, um... His entire backstory is actually given in this, or a pretty thorough recap. He's dead. Yeah, he's a ghost who can possess people and must help people um, in their lives, possessing them in order to become a better person and move on to a... have his life in balance so he can move on to a better afterlife or something like that. It's quantum leap if... The, it was a superhero. I don't know what Quantum Leap is. So. Quantum Leap was the show in the 80s about this guy from the future who would warp in other people's bodies and make their lives better. Interesting. I will yeah. probably not be watching that. But, it's actually uh, pretty good. Some episodes. But what's the plot of this issue? Um, so the plot of this issue is... Um, a lot of it is we're seeing a recap of Dead Man's backstory. Mm -hmm. So, so Dead Man was a circus acrobat performer guy, um, a Boston brand, a trapeze artist, a trapeze artist, and he was an asshole, and he was a jerk, and he was selfish, and he he thought of himself as the biggest fish in the small pond, and he's the master, he's the best, and. He was a huge dick all around. So someone shot him with a sniper rifle while he was in mid-performance. And he died. Well, he didn't die. He's kind of trapped in limbo. And after dying. After dying. And he wasn't really dead. Well, he. <laughs> well, they, it's kind of confusing because he, he can't move on to the afterlife until he performs these acts of kindness and goodwill, which involve him uh, possessing other people, trying to improve their lives. Right. And improve his own character while doing so. And in this issue, and in um, he talks a bit about um, he has he's given that obligation, but this is all in recap, so it's all in past mm -hmm. tense. But he's given that uh, obligation. He talks about he questions his ability to impact people, and is he really helping them? He tries to contact a medium from the circus where he worked in order to find out something. But she doesn't want to talk to him because he was an asshole in life. Yes, and that's pretty much all that happens. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not much is happening. It's all very past tense, but it is an interesting story that is being told. It's interesting. Yes. It's an interesting story. Um, Boston is an interesting character in that he is... You do have this inbuilt development in him because of what, why he is dead man. My problem is that this interesting story is the entire background of dead man. It's just his backstory. <laughs> So while it may be an interesting story, if we're doing an anthology series and we're we just going to... We can't continue it all the way. If we're just having a single arc, a single story, um, then focusing so much on backstory doesn't seems to be kind of counterproductive. And, and there's this one part where you have these two pages describing like all of these people that he has possessed and changed the lives of. But these could all be their own comic, and it could be a very interesting comic series unto itself, but it's... An, yeah, no, I mean, that's my response. Yeah. There are, I think, eight different panels. Not, there's there's more than eight. On that on those two pages? I'm going to count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve. There are twelve different panels. 
of just images with him describing people who he has helped while he's trying to figure out his way. And it it's, all sounds extremely interesting, and they're extremely interesting scenarios. He gives, like, and he just gives the entire premise of each one. If any one of those panels had been this book, this book would have been many times more interesting than what it is in mm -hmm. terms of actual story content. It's very, like, the book overall is very well written. The characters are very well done. Each the dead man is an interesting character. The situations that he's put in and these people that he's inhabiting are inter They have interesting stories and interesting problems. Like this could be dead man could have his own series and it could go on for a long time with very good stories, with very interesting characters and interesting conflicts. But I think that to do that, you have to actually show those stories. Yeah, you can't just tell us about him in the past tense. It's odd that. The character who has the most potential to show just kind of a snippet antho the, uh, just sort of a snippet vignette or just a look at a single incident in the mission of Dead Man is being stuffed into an anthology. Yeah, a ca no, but a character who runs into so many different anthology type stories. His, I mean, his entire series could just be an anthology. Yeah, but um, he himself is stuffed into a larger yeah. anthology. Then. That, but that you're taking him. You're putting him in your anthology series, mm -hmm. which gives you a great potential to just show a mission in the yeah. mission of Dead Man or an incident in the mission of Dead Man. I want to say a day in the life, but I really can't. A day in the dead. Yeah, and yet his the, this first issue is giving us more in-depth backstory and more exposition, just of things that have already happened, not even of things that are being set up. Just backstory and background mm -hmm. is giving us more than almost every other first issue for entire series yeah. that we've read. So it's kind of shooting itself in the foot. Mm -hmm. It's a really good idea for what um, this DC Universe Presents yep. could be, but I think that it's going almost in the entire opposite direction in terms of execution with story. Um, do you want to talk about art? Art, um, the art is good. It, you, well, what I really like is that um, just across from his narration and his speech bubbles, you can see that, on it, just find this one panel, you can see that Dead Man is possessing, you have the red aura around everyone he possesses. And I just think that's a really, really nice touch, and that it makes it clear where he is, even when he's other people. And, um, I, well, that's one touch I really like. As for the rest of the art, um, it's dark. I mean, you have this character who's dead, you have this character who's repenting for all of his all of his dickishness in life. And learning things. And learning things. Way, although we don't get to see what he's learning. Yep. And I, it fits... There's all this scene, like, most of the comic takes... It, you know, most of the comic that takes place in the present takes place in this dreary, rainy night, afternoon... Well, uh, 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 like, after dark, just kind of twilighty uh, yeah. setting. And it's very empathetic, I guess. The, the, the whole environment is very empathetic to um, Boston's struggles and the struggles of the people that he's inhabiting. And it's all very somber, but it's it's still like a, ha like a happy thing because you know that these lives will improve for the most part. At the same time, though, I think that's kind of a question that this is raising. Is he really helping? Yeah, that is, the, that is the that's big question. That's kind of his big question. But, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a good question. Yeah. But um, I think if we actually saw him helping some people, it would be more Instead poignant. of him just talking about Although, it. at the same time, in contrast to that, I think somber is a great word for it, but um, in contrast to that, in the supernatural realm, we've got some supernatural colors. Kind of like when we see outer space in the I'm DC universe, possessing that one person. The thing is, actually, like, could could we show just a page of him in the supernatural realm? Okay. Or that, talking to that's uh, beginning. Yeah, there's a. He tells in one of his backstory, in one of those little panel things, he was a he helped out a stripper. He possessed a yeah. stripper to make her life better. I want to see that. Yeah, the biggest. I, I want to show this. Panel. All right, just okay. show that. Panel. Like the, the great thing about this is because it is anthology, you can't really spoil anything yeah, yet. Yeah. Well, you can though. You, but I think you're because right. of the the nature of this comic in particular, I where it is all backstory pretty much, and that nothing really happens in the present tense so much. Still um, a twist ending, but um, yeah. Well, I'm not showing the last page. It's true, but there's yeah. I mean, in terms of. It's odd that this is probably the slowest paced comic that we've come into so far. But it, it fits the character that it's slow paced. It's him kind of crawling through the afterlife, and he, he does have a long road ahead of him.
and we're given that. And it does feel like a long road. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean I'm mean, i not so, I'm saying that it's interesting that this is the slowest paced comic that we've got and probably the, the most dense in terms of backstory, but I think that while it might be a good idea for the character or it might have potential for the character, I think it's really bad for the medium that's been selected for the venue yeah. of this uh, DC Universe Presents series. So, I mean, we'll see what happens with Dead Man. Um, Go on a... Go to letter scores now? Yeah, I'll go to letter scores. Um, where would you put this? I want to give it an A really badly. Like, I really enjoyed this comic a whole bunch, but, like, if this was just Dead Man number one, I would give it an A. But because I know that we can't have Dead Man all the time, I, I, I don't know what to give it. I, I think I'm just going to give it an A, because I really enjoyed what I did read. It was a really good read, really good characters, the writing was great, the art fit the mood very well. So I'm going to give it an A. I'm going to give it a C-. minus. Um, it's not a bad story, but again, I think that for the venue, it seems inappropriate, kind of. Also, it is... There's a lot in there. It's really talky. It's really wordy. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I think that it's starting off at a crawl, and it doesn't have very far to go. So knowing that and uh, trying to think of where this leaves me as a reader, especially okay. for future developments, yeah, I'm not. It's not bad. I mean, it's in the average zone, but I'm not thrilled. No. So well, we I really. I just really like the story that they told. Yeah. So, I, I, I really wish there could just be a Dead Man number one. I wish this Dead Man had his own series. I think the biggest problem it has that is that it is in, uh, it is not all about Dead Man. Yeah. Good idea, wrong venue. So, what are we looking at next? Next, um, let's look at... Oh, yeah, yeah we're, we'll be taking a look at Green Lantern Corps and Legion of Superheroes. Hooray, Legion of Superheroes. I am thrilled.